So the All Blacks have wrapped up another Rugby Championship. 2018 title is theirs. Uh, 35 points to 17 win over the Pumas. Uh, lots of tries. Tutu Ioane, uh, Naholo Tupelotu and Leonard Brown also on the board. For the Pumas, they couldn't get any tries until the second half, but it was Kubeli and Bofeli uh, who got tries for them. What a crowd. I mean, this crowd... Uh, was chanting and singing pretty early on. You could make make out kind of what they were saying. Um, if you spoke Spanish, you'd probably be able to make it up pretty clearly. It's the kind of thing we don't get as much of in the Southern Hemisphere in terms of that atmosphere. Uh, it was really good, although, um, yeah, some of the early play didn't quite match up uh, the passion that the supporters were putting in. And I'm talking about both teams because, uh, yeah, it was a little bit messy, uh, both sides were struggling with their lineouts early on, uh, and that kind of theme would continue throughout the match. Uh, the Pumas did take a lead early with Sanchez, who got a penalty, uh, but it didn't take many minutes later for Iwane to get his first try. Uh, pretty much Dealback's first time in the 22 after they'd been under the pump for a little bit. And that was kind of the story of the first half. The All Blacks, under pressure, defense would hold. And then when they would get a chance, they would just go and score points, which is kind of what we know they do. It, um, yeah, it's, it's a well-known thing for the All Blacks to do that. Uh, there was a lot of TMO in this game. A lot of stuff being reviewed. The game was stopped multiple times. There were a few kind of incidents and a fair bit of niggle, uh, which kind of sucks. I'll try not to focus on that stuff too much because it always gets a bit, um, I don't know. It's not all that fun talking about all the refereeing stuff and uh, how decisions went one way or the other, but I will touch on it. Um, I guess Bowden Barrett probably shut a few people up with his goal kicking today. thing with that guy is the consistency that we really need to see, um, but he certainly had a good night with the boot. Uh, halftime stats for this one. Sandy Bell did get a yellow card in that first half, I should say, but it was 21 points to 3 to the All Blacks. But this is what I mean by they're under the pump. The Argentinians had more than 60% of possession and territory. Uh, they had slightly fewer run meters, which is interesting because it means when the All Blacks got the ball, they were doing more with it. But as I say, it's kind of like what they are to do. But tellingly, the All Blacks tackle stats were still 84%, making 82 tackles in that first half alone. Whereas the Puma was only at 68% with 34. So 82 tackles to 34 in the first half. The All Blacks were making a lot of tackles. Uh, All Blacks also conceded one more penalty than the Pumas. Uh, for Rico Ioane's second try, it came from Delgi kind of spilling the ball. Uh, Cody Taylor was, um, well he stumbled over Delgi, kind of hit him in the head with his knee. But he was pushed. Uh, I might have my All Blacks hat on here, you guys can let me know if I'm being a bit one-sided, but for the most part, uh, I've seen it before when guys have been, um, one guy's jumping for a high ball, and the opposition guy ends up taking his legs out, but it's because he was pushed, usually the refs are like, play on, not his fault, so that's kind of what happened here. Uh, I mean, I guess, if this had been in reverse, if this had been at Eden Park, and it had been... An Argentinian guy got pushed by an All Blacks guy and ended up kneeing Bowden Barrett in the head. Would that have been a card? That's probably the question that a lot of rugby fans would ask. But uh, for me, it's the right call. Uh, you guys can let me know if you think that was a bit harsh. But as far as I'm like concerned, for the most part from what I watch, uh, if a guy's pushed, generally he's kind of given a, uh, an out on, um, on foul play. So he went in for a second try, and this is what I mean about the All Blacks scoring from those chances. Um, they were making a lot of tackles, but they were getting points when they uh, when they had a chance. Uh, Ioane could have had a hat trick, but um, Buffelli put a pretty sweet little ankle tap on him. That guy never seems to have a bad game. Um, I've talked about it in the comments before with some of you guys. Uh, even when the Pumas are getting beaten by almost 20 points, Buffelli still scores a try and makes a try-saving tackle. Uh, is a large part of what they are doing. Sanchez also had a good game, but he did put in a couple of funny kicks. Uh, one penalty that he missed was a seemingly a bit of a sitter. And one time when they had an attacking penalty, he tried to do a cheeky little um, kick to the other side to catch the All Blacks napping, but it was a really poor kick and the All Blacks just ended up uh, eating it all up. So, um, yeah, probably not his best game. And this is the story of, um, of beating the All Blacks, is you've basically got to be on your game. You can't be making too many mistakes, and there were too many from the Argentinians. 
Set piece in particular was a big, big problem. A lot of penalties conceded at scrum time. And the line out, uh, final line out stats for the Pumas were 68%. And you can't be doing that. If you're going to beat the All Blacks, you need to be getting a lot higher than that. The All Blacks were 86, so despite some early wobbles, they, they for the most part came right. Um, the Pumas did kind of make it interesting when they got those two tries because they were behind. Um, Bofelli's one was a little a nice little bit of play uh, from from Cabelli. He went back to, to the blind side, so that was a bit of quick thinking. He added a bit when he came on. His own try was another one that was a little bit controversial. The TMO basically told him, it's a double movement, don't give that try. And the ref basically said, nah, for me, that's all good. Kind of a 50-50 call, didn't end up costing anyone anything at the end of the day. Uh, it's probably one that you'd rather watch in real time rather than in slow-mo, because sometimes, uh, you know, slow-mo looks worse than it does in real time. But um, like I said, it didn't make a huge difference. But um, it does show that not all the 50-50s went the All Blacks way. Uh, if nothing else, uh, Anton Leonard's Brown's uh, try came from a scrum. So did Nahola's one. So, uh, yeah, that scrum dominance will definitely pay off if you can get it. And the All Blacks were getting it, um, you know, pretty, pretty often. Uh, the last 10 minutes of the first half, uh, Argentinians had heaps of pressure on the All Blacks, weren't able to score. That was with Sonny Bill in the bin, so that was kind of disappointing for them, not able to really, um, you know, get some scoreboard pressure on the All Blacks, who'd already pulled away a little bit. And um, there was another one that was a little bit controversial, uh, Crotty and Barrett's tackle on Sanchez. Um, again, I didn't actually see too much problem with it. I don't think Bowden really dug the shoulder into Sanchez's head. I think it was... Uh, a little bit more incidental than that, but again, I might have my All Blacks hat on, so if I'm being totally biased, do let me know. Again, the interesting switch would be if it was Barrett getting hit, as we all know, um, that guy seems to be a bit sacred when getting tackled, so um, yeah, but I, I thought it was I thought it was nothing too bad. I thought the refs kind of made a sensible call to just uh, give away a penalty there, because that's generally what they do. Like, guys slip into high tackles. Falau did one in the game against... Uh, uh, against the the Springboks, he had a high shot on um, on Cheslin Colby, but he was kind of ducking into it, so the ref was just like penalty, move on. So that was pretty uh, pretty much what happened there. But as I said, niggle, man, there was a lot of niggle in this game. Uh, guys trying to fire each other up. The All Blacks were trying to do it to Sanchez a fair bit. Uh, one thing that I would admit would annoy me if I was a fan of any other team, but the All Blacks, every time the Argentinians had advantage, the All Blacks would just try their best to kill that ball as much as they could. I know the All Blacks aren't the only team to do it, but they were doing it a lot. And the ref probably should have told them, if you're going to do that, I'm going to, I'm going to escalate from more than just a penalty, but generally he would just blow on to the penalties. Um, uh, what else? Frizzell was good, made a whole lot of tackles. Tuna Kwafe was big in the scrum. He made a whole lot of tackles. Um, Sanchez, like I said, was good, but a couple of funny kicks. Uh, Barrett's boot was good. Um, yeah, Cabelli was good when he came on. I mean, it's it's weird because I'm, I'm here sitting as an All Blacks fan who's just won the rugby championship. I thought it was going to be a bit closer. This is pretty much the scoreline that the bookies picked. I thought it was going to be a bit closer. That first half was kind of the All Blacks taking their chances and the Argentinians not really showing us their full their full form. So maybe I'm a little bit disappointed that it wasn't closer. But still, I mean, it's an All Blacks victory. That wasn't the All Blacks' best team, which is also a bit scary. And they um, and they still got a win by, you know, almost 20 points. So, uh, yeah, they're going to be a tough team to beat for the box next week in Pretoria. That rematch is big, but that um, Bok defense was very big in that game, so the All Blacks are going to have to be on their game. Uh, Malunga was solid when he came on. He's um, probably best if he's coming off the bench for a while, because when he is starting, the spotlight is on him a lot. But when he comes off the bench, he can just kind of do a little cameo thing. Uh, but that spot does usually seem to be reserved for Damian McKenzie, so it was just kind of luck that he, um, well, bad luck for Damian that he lost one of his grandparents, but it was just coincidence that that gave Moonga a chance to get a game. Um, but 
But yeah, set piece, man. Costly. Full time stats. Argentina, Argentina still had a bit more of the possession and territory, but it was only like 55%. Uh, the All Blacks had more run meters. Uh, the All Blacks tackling rate finished at about 100, uh, 185%, but 112 tackles. That's a key thing. If you look at the Argentinians, only made 63. So pretty much double the tackles. Not quite, but almost. That's according to ESPN. Uh, so, I mean, if you are going to do that, if you're going to have that much ball, you need to be scoring, and they weren't able to get it done. Uh, the Argentinian tackle rate was at 75, which is... Um, Again, against the All Blacks, it's not going to get it done. The Springboks showed when they beat the All Blacks that if you're gonna if you're gonna beat them, you you need to get enough of your things right. They in that game they had their defence right for the most part, even though they still let in a lot of points. Uh, and they had their goal kicking right. Their set piece was solid. So uh, not enough of those things came right for Argentina in this game. Um, yeah, their line out and especially their scrum really cost them but um that doesn't mean that they're not still a very good team they've had a pretty good rugby championship they've uh, they've showed some pretty good form uh going forward all blacks they just don't lose two in a row man a very good team uh still lots of depth in there good to see some other guys tested uh it will be interesting to see if argentina next week against the wallabies can can kind of turn this around and kind of put that that stake in the ground and say no no we're not we're not the fourth addition to to the rugby championship. We're here to compete, and they can really kind of put the the Aussies down into fourth spot because the Aussies are struggling, and uh, the All Blacks will have some revenge on their mind against the Springboks. That may be a bit of what happened here, is that the All Blacks would have been given a pretty hard time by their coaches uh, between that loss in Wellington and this game. So maybe that was also them kind of having a point to prove leading to a bit of that niggle because both sides were fired up. I think the Pumas guys were feeling a bit of the, the pressure of expectations at home and the All Blacks guys feeling the pressure of coming off a loss. So uh, that may have added to things. But um, yeah, man, like I said, good crowd. Lots of tries. Um, man, Lavanini put in some big hits. That guy is a monster. Uh, one of those hits was what preceded that um, that second Ioane try. He put a big hit on Perinara and it was, um, it was a thing of beauty. Although the All Blacks end up scoring from it. So that's kind of what they do. Um, but yeah, too much TMO for my liking. Um, as I said, I don't want to focus too much on that because for the most part, it was a pretty good game of rugby. I thought the calls for the most part went kind of 50-50. Some of them went towards the All Blacks and other than not. Um, there was another one when the Holos kind of ran over Buffelli. Again, the dude was on the ground, so I didn't think it was too bad. Um... But yeah, if I am being totally biased, please do let me know because um, I've only watched the game once and uh, very much as an All Blacks fan. Um, yeah, I still need to get myself a Pumas jersey at some point. Uh, one of the guys told me if the Pumas had one, he would send me one, but ah, not to be. Um, that's all right. It's on my list, so I'll get there. Um, but yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts on the game. 35-17. I was hoping for something a bit closer. Uh, the first half probably wasn't there from the Pumas uh, in terms of the execution improved in the second half but the All Blacks man just too good you guys let me know your thoughts and I'll talk to you again soon see you later